I'm Nizar Al Sayyad. I am the chair of the Center for Middle Eastern Studies and a professor of architecture, planning, and urban history here at Berkeley. So, in looking at this uh, collection called Fiat Lux by Ansel Adams, which is a beautiful collection that documents the life of the campus, that documents the buildings of the campus uh, in the 1960s, uh, as a work that was actually done for hire, one can find different things in it, and one can find lots of things that are also missing. Uh, as an urban historian, that's what I'm usually interested in. I, I think it is very important to recognize in any project of the sort is that uh, none of us uh, in the academy, particularly when we are commissioned to do a book or to come up with a series of photographs, are innocent of intent. There's always intent. But that intent is usually shaped by the kinds of conditions, constraints that are put on us. Uh, in the case of a photographer or even, I would say, a writer, doing a work for hire, a work that has to be approved, and I think the contract that Ansel Adams signed with the University of California and its regents is very important. And how is it that, uh, in a sense, he was expected to present a particular image that fit the, the desire of the regents, what is it that they wanted to project to the rest of California. But it, it appears to me that uh, even under this particular condition, and if he had politics, there was a way to be able to slip in here and there uh, commentary on what was going on in the time. I looked very carefully at these images, trying to find that, and I didn't. What we don't necessarily get is the campus in its place and of its place. Uh, what we get is the um, sort of the roaming eye of Ansel Adams, literally bringing a certain aesthetic to the campus, finding the image that fits his mental image of what a university is like. So one can look at this collection and say, oh, it's very interesting, that's the University of California system in 1965. Or one can look at it and say, this is what Ansel Adams imagined a university system anywhere could actually be with its diversity of buildings, people, and places. If you look at the images that the campus produces today, um, and the campus produces some uh, you know, truly amazing images, like look at this one. This is what the campus produced in 2010, the classroom. Very interesting, the classroom is empty. Why is it that the classroom in 2010 is empty? Uh, I think it's because it's a continuation of this very specific legacy where uh, you actually capture people, you capture people in sort of still life, they are not, they are not in motion. Uh, or you capture the beauty of the place without people altogether. And I think this, is, this also speaks for the moment in which Ansel Adams was engaged in this photographic exercise. Uh, as a very different kind of exercise than the photographers that go out today and document what the campus has. Uh, again, if you look at you know, what Ansel Adams uh, had, he had people who were like barely moving. When he captured people, they were talking to each other in this still pose, or they were looking at the camera. Here is an image uh, of a number of professors who are engaged in looking at documents very seriously. This is actually the Mark Twain papers, a very important collection. Another professor who's actually here, the chair of the Department of English, and, and three professors sitting on the side as if they are actually having a conversation. And one again would wonder. It looks like Berkeley was all male and all white uh, and all fi people in their 50s. And, and I, I think that what is absent from Ansel Adams' collection uh, is as telling as what is present. What is the role of the professional photographer when he or she are actually hired by an institution to document it? And not everything can be captured visually. And I think that a good photographer has to find the mechanism where people can read between the lines in, in a photograph, if you will. As an urban historian, I teach my students how to use historic photographs to be able to understand uh, things uh, that are as difficult as race relations, uh, to be able to know whether a particular building was in use or not in use at the time, whether it was inhabited by poor people or by wealthy people. Uh, there are techniques by which one can look at these photographs and analyze them this way. This particular collection is almost immune to all of this. It is so uh, beautiful that the only reading that you have uh, of may, what may have been going on in society at the time is what is not in the collection, not the clues that are put on the side of the collection itself. Now, did he ultimately have a choice or was the choice made by him by you know, his co-author who wrote the text, by university administrators who were involved. 
I don't know. I mean, for me, this is a beautiful historical exercise of basically being able to say, he took all these photographs, of course, absolutely. I mean, look at this one, with sort of the moon over there and the entire landscape of, of Los Angeles. And it appears to me that this is an image that looks beautiful for any campus administrator. It's a postcard. It's a postcard. Now, is that the University of California? I don't know. It's just a postcard. The notion that the campus wants to present itself to the outside world, and particularly in this case to funders, to alumni that will help support it, in an era of dwindling state support uh, is necessary. Uh, we fully understand that. This is not the 2008 uh, takeover of Stroud, 2009 takeover of Wheeler. This happens to be a football game. Everybody's happy, everybody's raising their arms. I just wish that there is a degree of authenticity and care uh, in being able to really recognize that the intellectual mission of a university goes beyond capturing people and buildings. It is about the interaction of people in spaces in a manner that brings about fundamental change.